Now we have seen how we can check whether we can do scripting, let's do the actual scripting. In this section, I'm going to talk about the actual scripting tool, uh, what is available in, in the GUI itself and how you can access it. Also, we are going to look at how we are going to create a recording so, and also look at uh, the recording that got created and also check how we can play back the actual recording in within the GUI itself. So this is not integrated with SAP, uh, sorry, not integrated with Excel just yet. So now that we have seen how to check the system settings for scripting, let's do an actual recording. Again, you come back to the customize local layout button or option in the toolbar, and you can uh, see here that there is a menu option which says scripting recording and playback. So you click here and you get this uh, small pop-up window which has uh, just a couple of buttons, play, record, stop, and this more. And uh, by the way, if you remember the uh, settings in the RZ11, if rec this recording script button is disabled, that's because the um, SAP GUI scripting user recording uh, variable is set to false, uh, sorry, disabled recording is set to true. So in my system it's false, so I can do recordings here. The first thing I usually do is I specify the, f the place and the file name where I want to save my recording. So I'm just going to call this test.vbs. So VBS is for Visual Basic Script. And now we can do recording. And you just, well, basically press the record button and now recording is active. I usually keep this uh, screen up on the, or this pop-up uh, up on the screen so I can always uh, stop the recording. And now you perform whatever um, activity you want uh, you need to do in uh, SAP um, I've, of course I usually start with a transaction and later on we will see how you can turn this recording into something which you can call um, one after the other um, from Excel so let's say uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a recording how I change an attribute of a business partner using transaction BP so I want to create a uh, structure this recording in a way that I can just call this process over and over again from Excel that's the, that's our end goal at the end of this course um, so for that reason I, I usually start from the um, from the you know the easy access menu and um, to make sure that I can like always start or go into a transaction, I always type the transaction code with slash NBP because think about it, if your script ends within the transaction, then just typing BP is not going to take you back to the beginning of the transaction. So yeah, just use slash N. I mean, it's just uh, something that I learned along the way. That's the most easier and the most convenient way. So I go into uh, slash NBP and I use the open BP um, uh, screen or sorry the button I put in my business partner number that I want to open so this comes up uh, as in display mode so then I go into change mode I'm going to put something into the search term to field and I'm going to save it and that's going to be my script so we just have to wait okay it took some time anyway it doesn't really matter and i stopped the recording and if i go into the same folder what we um, where we have created our um, script and i open i send this document to i just use edit so uh, if i open this uh, document what we can see that SAP has, or this GUI scripting part of SAP, has created a visual basis script for us. So that is based on our actions that we have uh, done in the GUI. We click start the transaction, we click the button, we have changed some fields, we saved the transaction, uh, saved the business partner in this case. And um, even if you read through the the code, even if you you know, if you even if you don't really understand Visual Basic, you can probably make sense of it. So here, the um, uh, the beginning of the code is just a bunch of declarations. So the uh, the system is creating an instance of the SAP GUI object and is checking whether it's there is a connection. Um, because again, in SAP, you might have connections to many different objects, and then it it starts a scripting object and 
Well, that's sort of the declaration part. The interesting part really starts here. It's all the lines we start with session dot. And uh, so again, even if you run through the code, you can pretty much uh, see what is going on. So this one maximizes the, the set GUI window. This one, as you can see, slash MVP. So that's the part where we enter the transaction. So you see toolbar zero, that's the BP transaction, and we send the key zero. So that's that was the enter key that I pressed until I have gone into the transaction. And then again, there is a toolbar button press. So that was the open button. And then I entered the business partner number. I've done something here. I've never really figured out what this character position is. But again, we don't, at this point, we don't really care. We just have to see uh, the flow if it makes sense. So again, toolbar button press. So that was the, the part where I did, um, I think I clicked on the, Oh, sorry, no. This was the OK button on the pop-up screen where I entered the business partner number. That was the edit button. And then here I have, so that's really a long, long sentence, but that's where I changed the test to um, the search term two to test two. And probably what he, yeah. I pressed enter and I press save. And that's what pre pretty much what I have done. And then again, you can see that if I would run this script again, then um, the system would, again, just go into slash MBP. If I was in the BP transaction, like I am now, it should be able to just restart the transaction. So I can go back to the, you know, the basic search screen of the um, BP transaction. So again, that was just a, uh, the bit on the slash and part, which I've mentioned before. And um, so that's, that's our recording. So, you know, not awfully complicated. And again, it comes for free because SAP has created all of this code for us. And actually, if I reopen that trend, uh, business partner, so let me just do that. And let me just remove this test too. And if I come out, let me come out of the transaction completely. So I still have that test one uh, WBS selected here. Actually, let me come here and then make some modification here. My first script. Okay, so I changed the, the search term to within the script itself. Again, uh, because it's a visual basic string, just to make sure that it's uh, still within double quotes. So if I save that, and now if I press play, I need to specify the file that I want to run again. But if I do that, I'm not doing anything now. And as you can see, the script the system is running the script. So it's basically just repeating the steps on the screen in the same way as, you know, well, as quick as your SAP system is. And it's just performing the same steps what we have recorded. If you go back to this uh, script, then um, uh, what you can see that what the script is doing is it, it is trying to, you know, press specific buttons on the screen, um, change values on specific field elements or, you know, fields. So this script only works as long as those buttons and fields are available on your screen and they can be, let's say, edited the way the script expects them to be, let's say, edited. So. If for some reason this business partner is not editable because it has, you know, status archived or something like that, your script is going to fail because it, you know, is trying to press the edit button and that might bring up a pop-up message and obviously your SAP uh, or the GUI expects that, you know, an OK button to be pressed on that pop-up message. But if you haven't recorded that, your script is going to fail. So, you know, there are these quirks within um, this whole GUI scripting, which you just have to keep in mind and, and you know, do your recordings uh, accordingly. If you have a recurring activity, which needs to be executed in exactly the same way every time, what I have shown you now is probably sufficient enough because you have recorded, your, recorded those steps. You need to play those uh, steps back exactly the same way. So you can just use the play button here and then execute the, uh, the VBS uh, script. Of course, if you need to make minor adjustments, uh, so for example, you have a script for, you know, month end closing. And the only thing which really changes is the, I don't know, some sort of date. You can just come here to the, uh, the, the script first in Notepad, edit those dates and then run it. So, you know, advance the month um, every time you run it. But 
we will see later on how you can uh, enhance it even further and then bring, uh, bring um, Microsoft Excel into the picture.